Good morning, good evening, and good night to everyone out there on the internet, whether you're listening to the podcast or watching us on YouTube. This is Lancing with myself, another episode in the weekly five-minute show where I take a little bit of time to tell you about being a freelance game designer and creative, especially when you're low on spoons and low on cash. I'm Steve D from 10 Star Games. And uh, way back on the uh, YouTube series, episodes 29 and 31, if you want to go and find them, we were talking about things that people often think you need for game design. Um, do you need to know a lot of maths? And do you need to know a lot of graphic design? And the answer for both of those was basically the same. Everything that you can bring to the game design process is going to be useful. The more you have in your quiver, the more things you can do. The less you have to learn, the less you have to move around them. And work around them and try to find solutions but you can work around them you can find solutions you can team up and the idea that you need everything before you can start is just going to slow you down it's always worth time to learn but you can't be everything you can't learn everything you need to team up and uh, being aware of where your holes are and your fa failings are will help you um, work around them and get to the games that you need as fast as you can. Now, another question that I get asked a lot of it is, is what do you, um, do you need research skills or the ability to research or a love of research or to do research? That was something that held me back a lot when as, as a role-playing uh, designer because um, research is a huge part of a lot of role-playing game work. You have to research the settings and the games that you're, that you're going to be working from if you're a freelancer. Uh, and there's a natural tendency among writers and role-playing game fans and nerds to be just adoring of research. They love to just get into settings and research them as much as possible and know every possible detail about them. I am not that kind of person. And there was lots of jobs as a freelancer that I just could not do because I could not research things or didn't want to spend the huge amount of time and energy that it would take me to, to get that part of the job done. You know, I couldn't work on games that lots of other people could because I just didn't know, for example, the DC universe or the Marvel universe or whatever things it was. I tried to work on Game of Thrones, but I couldn't read the books fast enough. You know, I tried to work on um, the, the the Dragon Age game, but I couldn't play the games fast enough. And I just couldn't take in all this information. There are plenty of worlds that I do know, but, um, you know, that they only make RPGs ever so often, you know, and... There are, there's a lot of things out there that just require a ton of research. And some people, as I say, are naturals for it. They just love learning things and knowing things. I'm not that kind of person. I prefer to just scattershot learn and learn from all sorts of things and be interested in everything, um, as opposed to just delving into something incredibly deeply. Uh, so research has been tricky for me. And there's sometimes games that I want to do that I have to do research for, uh, and I have to figure out how to get around that. So... As usual, the answer is research can be incredibly valuable and a really good skill to learn. It's not something that comes naturally, um, and some people are just naturally good at it. If you're not, you have to be aware of that. It's certainly going to hamper some of your abilities to work on any kind of freelance project. You're going to have to figure out either how to learn the skill or how to work around it or how to get someone to help you with it, you know? And, and all of those things that we said for the other episodes apply. You can design games that don't need as much research. You know, that's one of the reasons that I went on, went and did Relics is because I got bored of trying to learn everything about the World of Darkness and other games that I was working on because it's so torturous for me to do all that research. I just don't read fast and absorb information that way. So I went, oh, I'll make my own setting. Much more work, of course, but less research. Um, and that's just the key for me. Um, inventing things requires less research. I don't need to know about you know ancient Rome or ancient Greece or every character in the Marvel Universe if I'm working on my own projects. Um, and that's, that's just one example of ways to get around it. When we did need history for relics, we found history, people who were experts on that area and they were able to contribute and that solved that problem. Now, of course, you need money sometimes to pay those people, but some of those people were able to help us out in advance and then be paid afterwards and so on. So, um, yeah, research, like like maths, like psychology, like graphic design, like being able to teach, being a storyteller, all these things are useful, but you're not going to have all of them, and the best thing to do is to be aware of what you lack and work around them rather than trying to learn every possible skill you could. If you do have research skills, then great. That's something that's worth hanging on to. And like we said about being, putting, on, putting things on your resume... When you think about what your game design skills, you might be missing lots of things. You might be great at research. You might know everything there is to know about the Marvel Universe. That's going to be hugely important if you're ever working on a Marvel project, you know? 
if you just are good at absorbing settings and just watching every episode, if you're a binge watcher and you know, or just love diving into things, that's going to be a hugely useful skill for you. That's great, you know. And if you have some math skills, if you have some graphic design skills, all of these are great for you. I've got a bit of maths, I've got a good grasp of psychology, I've got a few good storytelling skills, I'm good with writing. Those are my skills. You're going to have a different set of skills. You're going to miss it. You're going to be missing some, and you're going to have other strengths. It's all about just identifying what you have, what you can learn, and what you can work around, you know, and, and having a solution for things. Research is useful. If you don't have it, you've got to find someone to help you or work around it somehow. If you do have it, advertise it, use it to your advantage. That's the key. You are an individual game designer with your own strengths and your own weaknesses. Figure them out. Use the strengths to your advantage and work around your weaknesses. There's also another great video about use, knowing your weaknesses and using them to your advantage with the old judo flip. So, um, whatever it is that you're looking for, there's always an answer of you can work around it. But if you, and if you don't have it, and if you do have it, you can use it to your advantage. And research is the perfect example of that. You can always get better at it. Always time to learn. But there's always time to make games without it. And don't let it slow you down. I didn't let it slow me down, even though I did have to say no to a few jobs because I just didn't have the skills. I got here in the end. That's the way it goes. If you lack some skills, it might just take you a little bit longer. And that's okay. So, till next time. Find out what your strengths are, find out what your weaknesses are, and uh, embrace them and work around them where you need to. Till next time, I've been Steve D. This has been Lansing with myself. Be good, play games, pat dogs, have fun.